Hey everyone, in today's video I will talk about a topic I don't think I have really addressed before in one of my YouTube videos. I haven't talked about it in my book Sewing Activewear and I will also talk about it in my upcoming Covetage book that is out in March of 2019. What am I referring to you might ask? Well, I am talking about this woolly nylon. This thread is very popular in the garment industry and if you look inside a lot of your underwear, activewear and some ready to wear knits you will notice that in the looper of the seams there's actually a very flossy thread that sort of spreads out and provides really beautiful coverage of the fabric edges and it also is a little bit softer towards the skin compared to regular overlocked thread but there are quite a few things to consider if you want to start using woolly nylon and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video now to start off woolly nylon is a bit of a misnomer it's also sometimes called stretch thread i think it's also called bulk 80s or 80s bulk because not all of that this type of thread is actually made out of nylon this one from maxilock this one is made out of nylon Whereas this one from Madeira is actually made out of polyester. So actually in my stash it's pretty much 50-50 divided between polyester and nylon. So when I say woolly nylon I'm actually also referring to polyester thread. Because the reason that woolly nylon I use this is because this is perhaps the firm for this type of thread that is most commonly used. Hence why I will keep continuing using it even though... I'm actually referring sometimes to a polyester thread. So first of all, what exactly is woolly nylon? Well, woolly nylon is a thread that is spun in a way or twisted in a way that when it runs through the looper of your serger or your cover stitch machine, it sort of gives friction through the thread. So it spreads out and provides really beautiful coverage. For instance, this one is stitched. Uh, this, is, this is a regular wide three thread serger stitch or overlock stitch and i used a pink woolly nylon in the looper and as you can see it provides a really nice decorative effect it's pretty pretty isn't it so if you want to sort of do something visible and using it for visible stitching woolly nylon is also a great option and another common use in the garment industry for woolly nylon is to use it in the looper thread of your cover stitch machine again can you see how well this coverage looked like now when i was doing a research for my upcoming cover stitch book i visited a garment fabric factory nearby and they always use woolly nylon in the loop on the cover stitch machine when hemming knits and they, they really like it because it provides such nice coverage and a softer finish the, that said, it could be a little bit different between different brands, which I will talk a bit more about in a second. So not all of these type of threads are created equally. In fact, they have quite different properties. And I will actually do a separate blog post about that in when I've done the cover stitch book, where I will talk more in depth about the different brands and the different particular properties that the different threads have. So not all woolly nylon is created equal and obviously not all woolly nylon are made of nylon either. But as you can see, this is one beautiful coverage of the looper thread when you're doing hemming with a cover stitch machine. And another great use of woolly nylon if you're having a surgery is when you're doing the flat lock seam. What I'm holding in my hand now is a regular three thread flat lock stitch sewn on my serger. And this is in one of the looper thread, the pink one. So when I pull the fabric aside, you can see this. Now I only use it for the looper thread that will create this loop stitch. Uh, if you want to use the ladder stitch instead, you should probably use woolly nylon in that looper instead. I don't because uh, if you use too much um, woolly nylon, you will create bulk. So I would only recommend that you use it where you want to have the visible effect. The Standard practice when it comes to garment manufacturing is to only use it in the looper. So for instance, on my soldier here, I have it in both loopers. They're different brands, that's why it looks a bit different on the spools, but they're pretty much the same thread. Another thing that it's good to know when it comes to using woolen nylon is that it tends to add tension to the looper, which means that you might need to adjust the tension setting. So for instance, 
when I'm using uh, wool and nylon in the looper on my cover stitch machine, I always reduce the looper tensions a little bit. Different brands, different type of stretch thread has different needs for how to much adjust the settings. Um, unfortunately, on my beloved baby look, imagine there is no manual way to change the tension of the looper. So that said, it does provide really even excellent stitching despite the fact that I'm using wool and nylon. So some machines can actually automatically understand the specifics of wool and nylon, but still I would in general recommend that you probably need to adjust the tension of the looper and also perhaps the needle tension as well to get that balanced stitch, especially if you're venturing to doing flat log, either the th two thread or the three thread flat log, you will probably need to do some experimenting with the tension to get that flat seam when you pull it apart. Also, there are a lot of different brands and I'm currently, as I said, doing a bit of an experiment trying to figure out the properties of the different brands. I should at least mention a few so you can try out and also I'd love to hear your opinion on what brands you find the best. One that is really popular, which I've yet to try, is the Maxilox Thread. This is Woolen Island that really spreads out a lot when you're stitching it. It's very popular to use for swimwear and lingerie. And this one is especially, I think, readily available in, the, in North America. It's a little bit tricky to locate here in Europe, but I was at least able to find it. One tricky thing when you want to use Woolen Island is that the range of color is a bit more limited, but there are two brands that I found really provide beautiful colors and great quality Woolen Island. And I'm going to give one shout out to the British company Empress Mills. They have a huge range of colors, so you will have no problem matching the Woolen Island to your fabric and your regular Sodio thread. So I highly recommend that you check out Empress Mill. I will li link to those in my description section. And another brand that I'm also really, really fond of, again, they have gorgeous colors. This one is called Madeira Aeroflop. And this is actually polyester, uh, but it looks absolutely fantastic when stitched down. Because this is one of the things that I find really important. I don't like my woolly nylon to become all sort of linty. I just want them to spread out and provide a nice coverage, but I don't want the, the thread to separate. I just want it looks nice and even. And these two brands, the Madeira Aeroflock and the Empress Will version, both do that. The only drawback of Empress Mill is how sometimes they come, um, they don't usually use cones, unfortunately, at least for the, um, the smaller spools. So you have to use net or um, a thread cap uh, to make them work on your cover stitch or your surgery. It depends. It becomes a little bit, they have a few different spools that depending on the length of your buy, but still a really great brand that I can highly recommend when it comes to Woolen Island. And here is another example made with the Empress Mill. This is the one that I've set up right now. This is a narrow three thread overlock and you can see it provides such a beautiful, beautiful little coverage. And I just love how this look. But as I said, it does add a little bit of bark. So if you want to, for instance, stitch down the seams afterwards, I don't recommend that you start using the woolen nylon because that will add much unnecessary bark. So I'm not here to say that every time you stitch stretchy fabrics, do underwear or activewear, you have to use woolen nylon. No way, that's not true. But there are definitely instances where you will enjoy the coverage and the look of woolen nylon. And the question I also get is, can you use woolen nylon for your regular sewing machine? And the answer is yes, you can. It will not be the same thing, definitely, but you can. For instance, so for instance, in this spool, there is actually woolen nylon winded. And I've done some experimenting so far. I'm definitely not using it a lot. I don't really, since I have both a serge and a cover stitch machine, it's not really something I need to use. But just to show you how it can look like, this is a twin needle stitch. This is how it looks from the right side using regular sewing machine thread. And this is how it looks on the reverse side. Now, not a huge difference, I would say, compared to a regular sewing machine thread. And the reason for that is that what the bobbin does is that it won't um, rub, so to speak, 
the woven island so that it spreads out and give that wonderful coverage that we're that we're looking for instead it more behaves like a regular thread which is why i would say that for for doing you know a regular twin needle stitch i don't really see that you have to use woolen nylon instead and also think you need to experiment a bit with tension settings uh, as i said the woolen nylon behaves a bit different than regular sewing thread so you probably ideally need both experimenting with the needle tension and perhaps also the bobbin tension which is a little bit more tricky so you definitely need to figure out if you find it worth doing that just to try out woolen nylon and there's a little bit i think a bit of a misconception when it comes to woolen nylon sometimes it's, it's referred to as stretch thread but it's not it's it has a little bit more stretch than regular uh, sewing machine thread or overlock thread but it's not like an elastic thread it's just it has a little bit more give so if you have a sewing machine uh, stitch and you want to give it more stretch uh, adding woolen nylon in the bobbin will not make a huge difference because i i don't think that this has more stretch than a regular sewing machine thread but i i think it's quite durable and it looks nice so definitely experiment i i say go ahead and try out different things i've also tried to use some decorative stitching as well using the woolen nylon in the looper but i wasn't super impressed but then again i didn't really have any issues either so i can't see any problems using the woolen nylon in the bobbin but uh, i wouldn't expect to have amazing results either so i would love to know if you have a different experience when it comes to using woolen nylon in the sewing machine because that's not really what i do mostly so i'm a little bit unsure about that particular topic so this was an overview of woolly nylon i hope that you find this video useful and you learn more about this thread that i definitely think you should start experimenting with especially if you have a serger or a cover stitch machine or perhaps both and i can guarantee you that it will give you what makes much more professional finish on the inside which you know some of us really enjoy that so definitely have some fun with wool nylon remember it's not a miracle thread but it is a really nice thread to have in your stash so that was all for me today if you haven't already please hit subscribe for a weekly sewing video also look out for my upcoming book about cover stitching it will be out in march of 2019 and once it's out i will definitely link to it in the description section stitch safe and i'll see you next time